So this section here again is about applied maximum and minimum problems. So you can see the the guidelines for solving these types of problems right here on your screen here. And what we're going to do is just go through some examples, like four or five of them of going through this procedure. So uh, example one, find two positive numbers whose product is 185 and their sum is a minimum. So step one was to identify all given quantities and quantities to be determined and if possible make a sketch. So we're going to identify the quantities. So we know that there are two positive numbers. So we'll let x be the uh, first positive number and let y be the second positive number. So these are numbers that are quantities to be determined because we need to find them. All right, so these are quantities to be determined. So then we are told that we want the product to be 185. So the product is going to be, we'll just call that P for product. And so that's the, the multiplication of the X and the Y. So X times Y, and that's 185. And then we want to have a when their sum is a minimum. So we need to find Uh, we need to find the the two numbers where the sum x plus y is equal to the minimum. So we need to find the uh, the 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 x and the y when the sum and I'll call it s for sum is equal to x plus y is a minimum. All right. So now. Now that I have the variables set up, I'll go to step two. So again, if you have any questions along the way, please just ask. But I right now I'm just writing down everything that is given in the problem, but I'm trying to translate it to algebraic expression. So step two is to write a primary equation for the quantity that is to be maximized or minimized and then it says that you might want to use some geometric formulas and then just so that you know um, if you need one then they shouldn't be very difficult to come up with it's usually like the volume of a cone or volume of a spear or or area of a triangle like some basic ones that you could find on the internet fairly easy if you forget them but here we go. So the primary equation is step two. So primary equation, this one did not involve any any geometry. It's just the equation that we're going to uh, maximize or minimize or the quantity that we want to maximize or minimize. So that would be minimize, minimize s equals x plus y. And then Step three is to reduce the primary equation to one having a single independent variable, and that might involve the use of a secondary equation relating the independent variables of the primary equation. So step three is to reduce the primary equation to one, uh, to an equation having one independent variable. So right now you can see that you have you actually have uh, two independent variables. So the s is the dependent variable and the x and the y are the independent variables. So you need the the equation to either be in terms of only x or in terms of only y. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to look back here at the other equation that we were given. The product is 185 and solve that for either x or y and then substitute that result into the primary equation to figure out what it would look like in terms of one of the variables x or one of the variables uh, y. So, so th this actually again, this is called the, the second area <laughs> equation. All right, so now here we go. So we have s equals x plus y and x, y equals 185. And it doesn't matter whether you solve this equation for x or y. It just needs to be in terms of one of the variables. So y is equal to 185 over x when I divide by x on each side. And then I'll take that result and I'll substitute it in for this y over here. So s is equal to x plus 185 over x. So now the primary equation is in terms of just x's or one one variable all right one independent variable so now let's do step four so step four is going to be determine the feasible domain of the primary equation and that is determine the values for which the stated problem makes sense so this is to find the the feasible domain. All right. Whoop. So now I remember that the the problem is only going to make sense for for values of x greater than zero and y greater than zero since the numbers need it to be positive numbers. All right. So the, so the feasible domain is all x greater than zero and all y greater than zero since x and y are positive numbers. So that was the that was the the beginning of the problem that we needed to start out with the fact that we needed to find two positive numbers. And then all we're going to do after this is step five, determine the desired maximum or minimum value by the calculus techniques. So let's go ahead and do this. And by the way, I'm actually in a different spot today than I have been the last couple of weeks because uh, I was in the sort of in the middle of my basement and it started getting a little bit cold and I have uh, like a, a space heater that I was using, but it was just getting too cold. So I moved into the back room in the basement and it has a door that is shut off from the rest of the basement but I can't really tell if I like it in here yet or not but if you can't hear me or if it seems muffled or anything just say something because I'm not sure if the uh, room acoustics are the the same as uh, before so now let's just determine the the maximum or minimum using calculus techniques so how are we going to do that? Well, I remember that S was equal to, now that was, again, that was the, in terms of X's, X plus 185 over X. And so if we want to find the maximum or minimum, remember that the maximum or, or minimum occur when the, the, at the critical numbers of the, a first derivative. All right, so the maximum or minimum occur at the the critical numbers of of the well, yeah, of the first derivative. All right, so uh, the the function doesn't have to have any maximum or minimums, but that's where they would occur. So uh, let's find the first derivative. So d dx, so s prime or ds dx is equal to the derivative of x is 1, and then the derivative of 
185 over x. Remember, this is like x plus 185 x to the negative 1 power. So it's minus 185 x to the negative 2 power, or 1 minus 185 over x squared. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I am going to set this equal to 0. So set this equal to 0. So then I'll subtract the, the 1. So negative 185 over x squared is negative 1. So then multiply by the x squared. So negative 185 is negative x squared. And then I will divide by negative 1. So 185 is x squared. Then x is equal to, all right, so plus or minus the, the square root of 185. But then I know that x has to be greater than 0. All right, so since the x had to be greater than or equal to 0, x is just going to be the square root of 185. Now, how do we tell... And, and by the way, th these all should be the set notation, but I, it's okay. Um, it doesn't it doesn't really matter to me because at some point I, I know that I'm off doing a different problem anyway. But this is what I get is the, the critical number. And by the way, the other critical number was x squared cannot equal to zero, x cannot equal to zero. But that's, that doesn't really matter anyway because the... Uh, x had to be greater than 0, and, and it wasn't in the domain of s of x anyway. All right, so how would you verify that the square root of 185 is indeed where the uh, maximum or minimum occurs, or whether it is a maximum or, or minimum? Well, um, so here we're going to... Remember, the, again, the, the question was, all right, we want to minimize their sum. So we need to show that the square root of 185 would give us a minimum and not a maximum. So we need to verify that the x equals square root of 105 is going to give us, is going to give a, a minimum and not a maximum. Well, all right, all you need to do to figure that out is use the second derivative test. So use the second derivative test. And then if, remember, s double prime of x is, is greater than 0, then s is concave up. In, and so that would mean that that, that value would be uh, the this x value would be x is a, a minimum, or otherwise the second derivative is less than zero, which would mean s is concave uh, down, which would mean that that x value would be a value that would lead to a maximum. So let's find the second derivative. So s prime was 1 minus 185 x to the negative 2. So s double prime of x would be, um, well, that would be uh, derivative of 1 is 0. Then negative 2 times negative 185 would be 370. So we have 370 x to the negative third power, or 370 over x to the third. And then we have s double prime of that square root of 185. And that is 370 over the square root of 185 to the third power. That's greater than zero. So that means that, therefore, the, the x equals the square root of 105 is where the, the minimum occurs. All right. So now, what do we want to do, we need to also find the y value. All right, so next find the y value. So I I ran out of paper here. Um, here, let me, let me get another piece of paper. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm not even, 
used to having a, a chair here either. So now let's actually go ahead and find the the y value. So we know that uh, the equation that relates the x and the y was y is 185 over x. So if x is the square root of 185, we have y is 185 over the square root of 185. That's the square root of 185. So then that means if we write our final conclusion here, therefore, the two numbers whose product is whose product is a 185 and sum is a minimum are the square root of 185 and the square root of 185 and so if we need it to find the minimum sum then then you could also say the minimum sum is square root of 185 plus square root of 185 is two times the square root of 185 all right what a time to be alive so i i hope that you enjoyed that one but if you have any questions please uh feel free to ask but I, I do think that this particular problem is interesting in a certain way that you know it's something All right, so find the length and width of a rectangle whose perimeter is 60 feet and has a maximum area. So let's actually see. What, okay, oh, I dropped my marker here. Oh, boy. The struggle is real. All right, so let's go ahead and I'll use a different marker for this one since I dropped the other one. So let's go ahead and start by going through step one. And step one was to identify the quantities. All right, so identify the, the quantities. So now uh, it said find the length and width of the rectangle. So the quantities probably will be um, well, L for length and W for width. And the perimeter is 60 feet. So perimeter, I'll call P. So that's 2L plus 2W for a rectangle. That's 60 feet. And then the maximum area is what we want to find. So we need to find the maximum area and area of a rectangle is a and that's l times w or length times width all right so step two then is to write down a primary equation so that would be the equation that we are trying to maximize or minimize the quantity for so in this case it's it's the maximize area is length times width so then we're going to in step three reduce the primary equation to one variable so what do we have here <laughs> oh boy uh, area is length times width and then uh, we have a secondary equation. All right, secondary equation would be the 
the what is it the perimeter equation so 2l plus 2w is 60 so just like in the last example I'm going to actually solve that equation for one of the the variables and then substitute that value into the other equation let me try to focus this a little bit because it, it's it seemed a little bit off to me but maybe it wasn't who knows all right so now uh, one thing that would make it a little bit easier for me is just to divide every term by 2 here. So I have L plus W is equal to 30. And let's just solve this for the W and subtract the, the L. So W is equal to L minus 30. Now I'll substitute that into the primary equation to find out what the... Uh, well, what the equation would look like in terms of one of the variables. So a is equal to l times 30 minus l. Then I'll distribute to get a is 30l minus l squared. And that's just so that when I, I go on to find the derivative later, I don't have to use the product rule. I'll already have distributed this. All right, so... Here is the equation I want to use. Step four, I'll list the feasible domain. And I know that because this is length and width, that length should be greater than zero and width should be greater than zero. So no matter what, I shouldn't get a negative length or a negative width. And now I'm moving on to the last step, which is just to find the maximum or the minimum. So we'll just start and define the, the first derivative. So a is 30L minus L squared. So a prime is 30 minus 2L. We'll set this equal to zero. So subtract the 30 to get negative 2L is negative 30 and divide by negative 2 to get L is 15. And then we should go ahead and verify that this should indeed be the L value that gives the maximum area, right? So verify that L equal 15 gives a, uh, gives a maximum. And so you do that by finding the second derivative. So that would be, in this case, negative 2. And then since the a double prime was less than 0, that means that a is concave down, which means that, this, that therefore the, the maximum is at l equals 15. All right, so now let's just find out what W is. So since the W is equal to 30 minus L, that means it's 30 minus 15, which is 15. So uh, what did it say? The, the length and the width of the rectangle then uh, is, is 15 by 15. So therefore, the length is, is 15 feet and the width is 15 feet. What a time to be alive, right? So I, I really hope that you enjoyed this example here. I'll leave it on the screen for a second longer so that you can go ahead and finish.
So here it is. A farmer with 2,000 meters of fencing wants to enclose a rectangle plot that borders a straight highway. So if the farmer does not fence the side along the highway, what is the largest area that can be enclosed? All right. So let's go ahead and we'll draw a diagram. So we need to identify the quantities. So he has... He has 2,000 meters of fencing to enclose a rectangular plot that borders a straight highway. So here is the highway over here. All right, so there's the highway. And he wants there to be 2,000 meters of fencing all, all the way around. So I don't know what type of fencing this is, but I'll draw it like it's it's sort of barbed wire. Why not? Because who's going in there these days anyway when we're all supposed to stay at home? So now, let's see. We know that this, this all needs to be 2,000 meters all the way around. So why don't we call this the width again? And then the width and then the length and then the length. All right, so the fencing is only going around three sides. So we know that 2W, so W is width and L is length, plus L has to be 2,000 meters of fencing. So hopefully that makes sense that the only difference in this problem is that we're not uh, going to have the uh, one side of the rectangle involved in the equation, all right? Because it's not it's not being fenced in along the highway. And then we want to know what is the largest area that can be enclosed. So largest means to maximize. So we're going to maximize the area, which is still going to be length times width. All right, so this is still the area that we're trying to maximize inside of the fencing, but in also enclosed by the highway. All right, so step two, that is to write down the primary equations. So that would be maximize A is equal to L times W. And then we're going to write the equation in terms of one variable. So write the equation in terms of one independent variable. So how do we do that? Well, we have 2w plus l is 2000 and we have a is equal to l times w. So I'll just subtract the 2w here to get L is 2000 minus 2w. I'll substitute that in here for L. So A is 2000 minus 2w times w. I'll distribute the w. So A is 2000w minus 2w squared. Actually, know that uh, now I am going to do step four, which is just writing down the feasible domain. And in this case, I, I do know that the uh, length and the width have to be um, positive again. All right, so the, the length must be greater than zero. The width has to be greater than zero. So now let's just find the uh, maximum or minimum. And in this case, we want to maximize the area. So we'll look for the maximum. So we need to find A prime. So this was A. So A prime is, is 2000 minus 4W. I'll set this equal to zero. 
So set equal to zero. Then I subtract the 2,000. So I get negative 4w is negative 2,000. And I'll divide by negative 4 to get w is equal to 500. And then if I want to show that's a maximum, I need to find the second derivative, which is negative 4. And since negative 4 is less than 0, that means that a is concave down. And therefore, it also means that the maximum area it occurs when w is equal to 500. All right. So now all I need to figure out is the the length. And the length was 2,000 minus 2w. So that will be 2,000 minus 2 times 500. So that's 2,000 minus 1,000. That's 1,000. So therefore, the maximum area is going to be length times width is, is going to be 500 times 1,000. So that is 500,000 square meters. All right, so the maximum area is 500,000 square meters. What a time to be alive, right? And what a time to be a, a farmer in the United States, right? Because right now, all I really care about is that the farmers keep on uh, getting the cows milk this. So this next one will be a little bit more difficult. The sum of the perimeters of an equilateral triangle and square is 10. Find the dimensions of the triangle and the square that produce a minimum total area. All right, so let's start by identifying the quantities. So the sum of the perimeters of an equilateral triangle and square is 10. So let's look at just the equilateral triangle for a moment. So this is an equilateral triangle. And in an equilateral triangle, that means that the length of all of the sides are actually just equal. So x, x, x. So x is the length of a side of this equilateral triangle. And also, the angles here are all 60, 60, and 60. All right. Now, we have a square. So a square has all lengths of the sides equal. So we'll just call those y. So y, y y, y, y. So y is the length of a side of the square. And we know that the sum of the perimeters of this triangle and square is 10. So the perimeter of this triangle is x plus x plus x is 3x. And the perimeter of this square is y plus y plus y plus y or 4y. So the sum of the perimeters, right, the sum of the perimeters 
was going to be 10. So uh, that would be P is 3X plus 4Y is equal to 10. Now it says find the, all right, find the dimension of the triangle and the square that produce a minimum total area. So we want to minimize the, the total area. So the total area is the area of the triangle plus the area of the square. Now, I think the, the hard part here is actually finding the area of the, the triangle. Otherwise, it's actually not too difficult of a, a problem, all right, just so that you know. But for the area of the, the square, the area is just going to be length times width or y times y, so it's y squared. But if we want to find the area of the triangle, well, the area of a triangle is going to be one half base times height. But I know what the base is, it's x, but the height is actually, right, this is going to be the height of the triangle, whatever this value is here. So this is the height and this is the, and this is the base. All right, so that height is a little bit tricky to find here, but if you know that this is a 60-60-60 a triangle here, then I actually can uh, draw the, the perpendicular here. So I have a 30-60-90 triangle. And then what that means is that... I can go ahead and figure out what the height of this this triangle is from from there. All right, so let me be clear on that. That I already know that this is x, this is 60, 30, and 90. But usually in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, this would be a uh, a, a one, a two, and a square root of three triangle, right? So the one would be here, the two would be here, and the square root of three right here, right? So that all this means then is that this length here is actually square root of three over two x. All right, so hopefully you can see that all I, all I did was take the the uh, ratios here of the square root of three, uh, the two and the one, and then applied that to this triangle that I have here. And now that means that the area is going to be one half times the base, which is x, times the height, which was square root of three over two x, so square root of three over two x. So then if I go ahead and I simplify this, this is going to be a square root of three over two times two of four x squared plus y squared. And I'm calling that a for area. All right, so now this is what I want to minimize. So that is my primary equation. So that's my primary equation. And then I already also knew that my secondary equation was, that was the uh, 3x plus 4y is equal to 10. But <laughs> hopefully you can see why. Oh, well, okay. So yes, okay. So why did I put the x next to the, the height? Okay, so let me go ahead and I'll I'll review that. I'll review that again. All right. So normally in a normally in a in a uh, 30 60 90 degree uh, triangle, right? I know that this is going to be the the one and then the 
the two, and then the the uh, square root of three. All right. So if I what I can do actually is if I actually divide these all, I can actually divide these all by two, right? So then I have I have sixty, thirty, and ninety. So that's one square root of three over two, and then a half down here. And then I could multiply these all by x. So if I multiply this by x, this by x, and this by x, then if this side is equal to x, then this side needs to be equal to square root of 3 over 2x. All right, so uh, let me know if that is what you meant, Nazareth. I, I think that makes it a little bit more clear than what I said before, just looking at the the ratios of these. But it it is a little bit tricky if you <laughs> if you... Uh, think about it like this is not the easiest problem that we've done and then I'll go ahead and I will I lost the the marker so I'll just I'll just pick this one all right so then I'll pick one of the variables to solve the secondary equation for so how about x so I'll just subtract the 4y subtract the 4y so I have 3x is equal to 10 minus 4y, and then I'll divide by 3, so x is 10 minus 4y over 3, and then that's what gets substituted in here. So then when I go ahead and I substitute that into the primary equation, so this is quite frankly going to be a big mess, all right, so uh, I'm glad that it's a nice day out today because you'll want to go take a walk after this question here for sure probably all right so now let's substitute that in so that the area becomes square root of 3 over 4 times 10 minus 4 y over 3 squared plus y squared and then I'll just go ahead and I'll, I'll well, really, I I need to find the derivative, but I'm going to simplify this at this point. So square root of 3 over 4 times, I'll make that 10 minus 4y squared over 3 squared, which is 9, plus y squared. And then 4 times 9 is 36, so square root of 3 over... 36 times 10 minus 4y squared plus y squared. So the the one thing that I do want you to be mindful of again is the feasible domain. So for step four, the feasible domain is the x is greater than zero and y is greater than zero. The sides of the the triangle and the sides of the square both need to be positive. All right, so now all we need to do is go ahead and find the derivative here. So, <laughs> well, okay, so, uh, well, let's find the derivative. So, um, a prime is going to be a square root of 3 over 36. And then I'll use the, uh, I'll go ahead and just use the chain rule here. So that will be 2 times 10 minus 4y to the first power times the derivative of the 10 minus 4y, which is negative 4, then plus the derivative of y squared, which is 2y. And then go ahead and remember that we'll need to uh, set this equal to zero. So uh, let's simplify this first. So two times negative four is negative eight. So negative eight square root of three over 36 times 10 minus four y plus two y. And then I'll, I'll simplify eight over 36. So that will be, what will that be? That will be a negative 
2 square root of 3 over 9 times 10 minus 4y plus 2y. And then if I go ahead and I'll just, it, it's up to you how you, <laughs> it's really up to you how you want to do this. But if I, I distribute this, I will get negative 2 square root of 3 times 10 over 9. So negative 20 square root of 3 over 9. Then negative 2 square root of 3 times negative 4y over 9 will be plus 8 square root of 3 over 9y plus 2y. Then I'll factor the y out of these two terms to get negative 20 square root of 3 over 9 plus 8 square root of 3 over 9 plus 2 times y. And then after this, I'll just set this equal to 0. So then I'll need to add the 20 square root of 3 over 9 to each side. So that's 8 square root of 3 over 9 plus 2y is 20 square root of 3 over 9. And then divide by 8 square root of 3 over 9 plus 2. So y is 20 square root of 3 over 9 over... 8 square root of 3 over 9 plus 2. So that's it. Now I'll I'll tell you as a I'll tell you that a as a decimal that's about 1.09. Alright, so these are not actually very large figures here, unless this is like in like miles or something, but I'm assuming, like, since the units are not given here, we're talking fairly small uh, units. And so, now we can verify that the, the second derivative is going to be greater than zero. So, we're, <laughs> do, do you want to find that? Let's just find this. All right, so A prime... Remember, a prime was the negative 20 square root of 3 over 9 plus 8 square root of 3 over 9 plus 2y. So then a double prime would be a derivative of negative 20 square root of 3 over 9 is 0. And derivative of 8 square root of 3 over 9 plus 2y is just the 8 square root of 3 over 9 plus 2, which is definitely positive which means that therefore a is concave up, which means that this y, y approximately 1.09 gives a, a uh, well, yeah, a minimum area. All right, the minimum total area. Now you just need to find x. <laughs> so let's go ahead and find x. So now... Let's find the x, and x, remember that x was 10 minus 4y over 3. So then if you go ahead and you substitute all of this in for the, the uh, y here, I, I won't actually go through all of that arithmetic, but you do get 60 over... 8 square root of 3 plus 18, and that's about 1.88. So what that means is that the dimensions of the the uh, triangle were about 1.88, and the dimensions of the square were about 1.09. So remember that this was the dimension of the the square, and this was the dimension of the triangle. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that. I know that this, again, was a lot. I, I think that I, I mentioned at the beginning that this one would be a lot more than
you're aware, let me show you what how different that would be actually. So it would be uh, 10 minus 4 times 1.09 and then divide it by 3. So actually, did, well, okay, this, this time it, it didn't actually make that big of a difference. Maybe that's why I said approximately because it is actually an approximate answer. So, yeah. See that it would give you exactly 1.88 instead of what it should have been 1.88345 All right, so there is a big difference, especially if you are are trying to be a, a physicist or an aerospace engineer, or whatever people do with um, certain things, calculus three and beyond. All right, so I hope that you enjoyed that. So let's look at another example here. An open box of maximum volume is to be made from a square piece of material 20 inches on a side by cutting equal squares from the corners and turning up the sides. Find the height of the box and its maximum volume. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is identify the quantities. All right, so you know that you are starting with a piece of material that square in 20 inches on each side. So here it is. Here is the square piece of material. So 20 inches, 20 inches, 20 inches, 20 inches. And you're cutting equal squares from the corners. So I'll I'll draw this here so that you can see what I mean by equal squares. They mean like x, 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 x from this corner, x, 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 x from that corner, x, 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 x from this corner, and x, 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 x from that corner. All right, so now you can see, hopefully, uh, a visualization of this would be that this is actually the bottom of the box right here. All right, so this right here is the bottom of the box. And then you're going to fold up, you're going to fold up the, like, this part right here, this part right here, this part right here, and this part right here so that it is a... A box. Now it's not going to have a top to the box, but that's a different issue. All right. So these four corners are gone, though. So what that means is that this is the the length and the width of the bottom of the box, and then the x is how tall the box is. So that's how tall the box is once you fold up the sides. So you need to then figure out what the length of the box is. So the length of the box, we'll call it L, and the width of the box, so that's W, and then the height of the box is H. So then I already said that the height of the box was X, like how tall this is once you fold up the sides of the box. Now, the length and the width are a little bit more tricky because you know that it was 20 inches across when you start it, but you cut off the x here and you cut off the x here, so it's actually 20 minus 2x, and then the width, the same thing. You have 20 along the side, but you cut off this x and you cut off this x, so the width is just right here, so it's 20 minus 2x. All right, so hopefully... That all makes sense of where this is coming from. And then, again, feel free to ask if any of this uh, seemed a little bit strange to you. And you want a box of maximum volume. So we want to maximize the volume of the box. And that will be length times width times height is the volume of a box. 
So what I know now then is that I can go ahead and just substitute the length, the width, and the height into this equation here. So that will be volume is length is 20 minus 2x times 20 minus 2x times x. And then do you see here that, that now I already have the primary equation here in terms of one independent variable. So I, I really, I, I'm already done in that, in that case here. So these were actually, believe it or not, these were all of my secondary equations, all right? So keep that in mind that those were my secondary equations in this case, and then I'm substituting those into the, the primary equation of the volume that I'm trying to maximize. So then I want to write down my feasible domain and I know that x has to be greater than zero because I'm not going to cut off a, a, a negative quantity off of the corner of the box. So now the, the other thing is that you, you have to be careful because you want length to be greater than zero, width to be greater than zero, and height to be greater than zero also. So if you have an x value that would give you a negative length or a negative width or a negative height, but since height is the x, that wouldn't be as big of a deal to define that separately here. But if you get an x value that would give you a negative length or a negative width or a zero length or a zero width, you don't want that value either. All right, so now let's go ahead and find the, the derivative here. So I can use the product rule if we would like. So uh, let's use the product rule. So you have uh, uvw, so 20 minus 2x, 20 minus 2x, and x. I probably shouldn't use the v because v was volume, so it doesn't matter. R, S, T, whatever values you want to use. All right, so u prime is negative 2, v prime negative 2, and w prime is 1. So we have v prime is uh, the u prime times v w. So u prime v w plus u v prime w plus u v w prime. So that will be negative 2 times 20 minus 2x times x plus 20 minus 2x times negative 2 times x plus 20 minus 2x times 20 minus 2x times one at this point i hope that you would agree that you might want to just multiply this out before you go ahead and do this because you still have to go ahead and set this equal to zero which is going to be a pain but that's okay i hope that you're enjoying this regardless so we have a negative 2x times 20 minus 2x so that's uh what is that negative 40x plus 4x squared, the negative 2x times the 20 minus 2x, so that's negative 40x plus the, oh boy, a 4x squared, and then we have 20 minus 2x times 20 minus 2x, so that's 400 minus 4x, oh sorry, 40x, 40x minus 40x plus 4x squared, and if I combine like terms, I have, well, that looks like it's 4x squared plus 4x squared plus 4x squared. That's 12x squared. Then I have a minus 40x minus 40x minus 40x minus 40x. That's minus 160x. And then we have a minus or plus plus 400. And then I am going to set this equal to zero here, set equal to zero. So then if I go ahead and divide this all by four, 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 I get three X squared minus 40 X plus 100 equals zero. And then I, I only did that to make it easier maybe for me to factor this. So if I factor this, I get 
uh, 3x minus 10 times x minus 10 equals 0. So then I set each factor equal to 0. So 3x minus 10 is 0, or x minus 10 is 0. So then if I add the 10, I get 3x is equal to 10, or divide, uh, and then divide by 3. So x is 10 over 3. And then I want to uh, add the 10 to get x is 10. But I, I should notice that x cannot be 10 because x equals 10 would make the the would make the length and width equal to zero, right? Because length is 20 minus 2x, so that would be 20 minus 2 times 10, which would be zero. So you don't want a zero length or a zero width. So I already know that x is 10 over 3. So now that I know that x is 10 over 3, that was the, the height. So the height is equal to, oh boy, what a time to be alive, right? So height is equal to x. So that's 10 over 3 inches. And the length is equal to the width, which were both 20 minus 2x. So 20 minus 2 times uh, 10 over 3. So 20 minus 20 over 3. That would be 40 over 3. So then the, if you want the maximum volume, then the, the maximum volume is, so therefore the maximum volume is going to be volume is length times width times height so that's oh boy well then that's 10 thirds was the height so 40 thirds times 40 thirds times 10 thirds so that would be oh, oh boy 16,000 over 27 inches cubed right so the the height was in inches, the length and the width were in inches, and the volume is in inches cubed. All right, so that would be the volume of the box. Now, honestly, if it were me, what I would probably do is I would actually just pour some water into the box and then uh, let the box fill up and then just dump out the water and measure the water out as I was... I was uh, was you know dumping it out just measure the water out and see what the volume of the box would have been but that's just uh, my opinion here all right actually i'm uh, that's if the the box was not cardboard or something like that that would get soggy with the water being poured right into the box so hopefully you enjoyed that problem here so Again, if you have any questions, please let me know. But we have one more example here. And this one will be the last one. By the way, we didn't actually verify that this would be a, a, a maximum volume. But you, you could go ahead and do that. Because if you remember, the derivative was 12x squared minus 160x plus 400. So the second derivative will be 24x minus 160. And then the second derivative at 10 over 3 would be 2 for 24 times, so 240 over 3, so uh, minus 160. So then there you go. That that's That's all it is, right? So that would be... 240 over 3 minus 160, so that would be, what is that? That's 80 minus 160, so that's negative 80, so that's less than 0, so that means that V is concave down, and so that means X equals 10 over 3 gives a maximum. So that's it. Like, that's all, all you would do to verify that if you need it to verify that. All right, what a time to be alive. So now there is.
a rectangular page is to contain 36 square inches of print. Oh boy, now my my markers are apparently magnetized, so they're sticking to the to the laptop here. So this is even worse as it goes, I guess. Oh boy, so I hope the laptop doesn't overheat here. So a rectangular page is to contain 36 square inches of print. So let me draw a rectangular page here. And there should be 36 square inches of print. So the print area is 36 inches squared or 36 square inches. And the margins on each side are one and a half inches or 1.5 inches. All right. So I'm going to draw the margins in. So here are the margins. So that would be 1.5 inches here, 1.5 inches here, 1.5 inches here, 1.5 inches. So these are the these are the margins. All right. So margins. So find the dimensions of the page such that the least amount of paper is used. So this is the this is the entire page. So we want to find the area of the entire page. So uh, the and, and then minimize it or find the least amount. So minimize the area of the page so that the Abita left. That I guess I said too much. All right. So that the least amount of paper is used. All right. There we go. So let's actually just call the outside of the well it really doesn't matter but if, whether you call the inside the print area x or the outside the uh the the page area x but i'm going to go with the the outside all right so i'm going to call this the x x y y so x will be the uh, width of the page and y will be the length of the page and when i say width and length i mean width of the page including the the margins all right including the including the margins all right so the length of the page including the margins all right, so we want to minimize the area of the page. So minimize the area that's A, and the area of the page is X times Y. So we need to rewrite this primary equation. So again, this is going to be the primary equation in terms of just one of the uh, one of the variables. All right. So now, what do you know then? Well, uh, well, I know that the print area is thirty-six. So the print area is is equal to thirty-six. So, well, this length, if the outside is x and the margins are both one point five. This is x minus 3, and this is x minus 3, and then this other length going the other, like the, the, the length, all right, would be y minus 3, and this would be y minus 3. So it's y minus both of the two margins. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so y minus both of the two margins is this this here so uh, this part so 1.5 and 1.5 like that 
yeah, so 1.5 plus the 1.5 plus whatever is in the middle has to equal y, right? So if I, I take the y minus 1.5 minus 1.5, that will give me y minus 3. And the same thing for the x. If I, I go ahead and I see that this is 1.5 and this is 1.5, then if this is equal, the whole thing is equal to x, then if I subtract the 1.5 and the 1.5, then this little part that's left here is going to be x minus 3. And then the other part that's left for the length of the print area would be y minus 3. All right, let me know if that makes sense. Or I can draw a different diagram, but if that makes sense, then I, I won't say any more. All right, thank you, Nozer. All right, very good. So now, then that means the print area then is going to be x minus 3 times y minus 3 is equal to 36. So all I need to do then is solve this equation for x or, or y and then substitute it in over here. But this is actually a very difficult equation in a way to solve for x or y, but we're going to do that anyway. So let's just divide by y minus 3 on each side. So x minus 3 is equal to 36 over y minus 3. And then I'll add the 3. So x is 36 over y minus 3 plus 3. All right, there we go. What a time to be alive, right? So now that gets substituted in for this x over here. So that will now become a equals x times, uh, well, x was, yeah, x times y. So x was 36 over y minus 3 plus 3 times y. And remember that I need to find the uh, derivative at some point. So if you want to simplify this, you can, so I'll, I'll distribute the y in, so I have 36y over y minus 3 plus 3, and then if I write this, uh, oh, plus 3y, if I write that as over uh, times y minus 3 over y minus 3 to find a common denominator, then I have, once I distribute the 3y here, 36y plus 3y squared minus 9y all over y minus 3. And then what I'll do is I'll combine the like terms, 36y minus 9y. So that will be, oh boy, well, oh, all I can say is that this is a, a big mess, all right, but that, that looks like it's uh, 27y plus 3y squared all over y minus 3. Now, uh, before I go into finding the maximum and the uh, minimum, just remember that the x has to be greater than 0 and the y has to be greater than 0. All right, so that's our feasible domain that we don't want any x or y values that are going to be negative here. All right, so now let's go ahead and uh, find the derivative. So the derivative, we need to use the quotient rule. So use the quotient rule. So to find the a prime, so the numerator was u, so 27y plus 3y squared. Denominator is b, so y minus 3. So u prime is 27 plus 6y, and then the v prime is 1. So then I can just go ahead and... Oh boy, now go ahead and find out what a prime is. So a prime is, uh, oh boy, so that will be u prime v minus uv prime all over v squared. So that is 
27 plus 6y times the y minus 3 minus 27y plus 3y squared times 1 all over y minus 3 to the second power. All right, so I, I hope that you're enjoying this here. So now, let's see. Now you can combine the like terms. So we'll distribute here, distribute here. So we have 27y minus, so 27 times 3. Actually, you know what? This is... This is crazy. I think it's, um, I'm going to double check. Yeah, minus 81, then plus, <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, so so we have, yeah, 27y uh, minus 81 plus 6y squared minus 18y, then distribute the negative here. So minus 27y minus 3y squared all over y minus 3 squared so 27 y zeros out and then we have 6 y squared oh boy minus 3 y squared so that's 3 y squared then we have a minus the 18 y minus 81 all over the the uh, oh boy minus the y minus 3 squared all right, so now what are we going to do with this? We are going to set this equal to zero here. So let's set this equal to zero. So set equal to zero. So 3y squared minus 18y minus 81 equals zero. And then if I do that, I can divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3. So y squared minus 6y minus the, oh boy, this is actually like one of those things where it's, it's a, it's a, it's quite a lot, isn't it? Uh, minus 27 equals 0. Then you can factor this into a y minus 9 y plus 3 equals 0. So then the uh, two factors, you bo uh, set both of them equal to 0. So y minus 9 equals 0. y plus 3 equals 0. So if you add the 9, you get y is 9. Or if you subtract the 3, you get y is negative 3. But this cannot be a solution because uh, y has to be greater than 0. So then you know that y has to be 9. And then since the... Welcome back, Avita. All right, nice to, to have you back. All right, so now we have the x is equal to 36 over... Wait, did I say 36? I, I don't actually remember what x was. <laughs> oh, yes. Thir yeah, so so... Remember that x was equal to 36 over y minus 3 plus 3. So then, since y is 9, we have that. <laughs> oh boy, x is equal to 36 over 9 minus 3 plus 3. So that's 36 over 6 plus 3. So it's 36 over 6 is 6, and 6 plus 3 is 9. So it's 9. So therefore, y was 9 inches and x is 9 inches, and those were the dimensions of the page. So therefore, the dimensions of the page, such that the least amount of paper is used, is going to be Oh, uh, what is it? That, that would be oh, 9 inches by 9 inches. And again, if you wanted to verify that this was actually the minimum, then you could find the A double prime. And A double prime would be the derivative of this up here. So then the you would have to use the quotient rule. So U would be 3Y squared minus 18Y minus 81. 
and so u prime would be 6y minus 18 and then uh, the v is y minus 3 squared or v prime is 2 times y minus 3 so a double prime is oh boy uh, 6y minus 18 then times y minus 3 squared minus 3y squared minus 18y minus 81 times 2 times y minus 3 and then that's all over y minus 3 squared and so if you want it to substitute the 9 into this then what would you get I'll, I'll show you real quickly it would be uh, 6 times 9 minus 18 so that's 36 times uh, 9 minus 3 squared, so 1296 minus the uh, 2 times 3 times 9 squared minus 18 times 9 minus 81 times 9 minus 3, so that would be 500, 540 over uh, 9 minus 3 squared, so uh, that would be... Oh, a 36 and then that's greater than zero so therefore a is concave up and so therefore there is a, a minimum so that means uh, that what letter was it I have no idea what y equals 9 gives the minimum value here all right so hopefully you enjoyed this section here on the applied optimization problems or applied maximum and minimum problems.